Hi, this is Bob Scully and welcome to another edition of The World Show, Entrepreneurs of the Fiera Series. This week, the story of an entrepreneur whose company manages one of the most rare and precious commodities of all. No, not oil, not air, not water. But I'm late, runs a company called Gyro, which has been managing time for over 30 years in more than 25 countries. From Albany, New York to Worcester, Mass, his company manages time for public transit systems, for parcel delivery systems, for almost any system really, and does it extremely well. Here he is. Well, Amelie, you work with one of the most fascinating, perhaps the most fascinating um, quantity we're given in existence in the universe, which is time. And I want to get into that because it is incredible to think you could build a company around the notion of time. But uh, in case anybody's out there is wondering, you know, how much of this you do, I'm just going to, I'm looking at the alphabetical list of your clients just in the U.S. and it goes from Albany to Worcester, Mass. But in the, in the, if I go alphabetically, Boston, Buffalo, Cleveland, Honolulu, New York, Newark, Phoenix, Pittsburgh, Richmond, San Diego, it goes on and on. You're everywhere, really. Um, and all over the world, Chile and, and, and uh, Norway and, and everywhere else. And so I'll start with a simple, what, what is it that Gyro does? Well, we do software. We do software for public transit. More precisely, we do software to optimize schedules, bus schedules and driver schedules. Optimize meaning to produce efficient schedules. And uh, you also do it for the mail, not, in, yeah, not, a, yeah. not the U.S. Postal Service, but uh, a whole bunch of courier services in the U.S. and mail, national mail services yeah, around the we world. Do, we do also software to, uh, to build efficient route delivery. And you have uh, hundreds of clients, yeah, uh, yeah. and you're obviously the, you're the world leader in this market. We have more than 200 installations worldwide, large cities, large cities with good public transit, such as here in Montreal. It's uh -huh. one of our, our clients for more than 30 years. Uh -huh. And uh, many customers in uh, Europe, Scandinavia, Australia, and of course, the US. And uh, uh, I'm sure there's some people out there thinking, what, a schedule? What's the big deal? Anybody can do a schedule. You know, you do your son's little league schedule on, the, on, the, on a napkin. Um, why is it that complicated? And because if you're picking up the business, somebody else isn't, or, or people aren't trying to do it themselves. Why is it so hard to do? Uh, maybe I will, I will explain it starting with, uh, with the first step of the, our company which was to develop a tool to evaluate the uh, collective agreement. So at the time... Union there, contracts. Uh, union contracts. There was a need to evaluate what was the cost of a modification to, uh, to a union agreement. And starting from that, we found that there was a lot of interest in large cities for such a tool. And then we started to add some features to that tool to, to integrate, to develop schedules for starting with driver, driver schedules. It looks easy to build a driver schedule, mm -hmm. but if you want to do it in an efficient way, if you want to build good schedules, you have to take into account as well the collective agreement, as the constraints of the city, as the way of life of the people. In our situation, we do business in, uh, in Singapore, in Stockholm, in Montreal. It's a very, very different context, and it's a very different way to build schedules. So, for instance, you might go to a city, I don't know, you go to Chicago and they say, we need three coffee breaks, yeah. and, and you, or you might go to Seattle and they say, we want no overtime, okay. uh, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah, exactly, and uh, for example, in Scandinavia, you have to give a coffee break of 20 minutes, after one hour at 30, uh, one hour and a half of driving. So you need a coffee break of 20 minutes. In Singapore, you can start to drive a bus at seven in the morning and you can stop at seven in the evening. That tells you something too <laughs> about huh, who's the richer of the two, right? Uh, <laughs> Singapore's doing pretty good. Uh, I think if, if, G, 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 GNP per person, I think they're one of the highest in the world. Um, but um, even then, uh, how come you haven't been imitated? How come there aren't a bunch of people, computer geeks, somewhere just saying, okay, I got all that, I'll put it into the... How complicated is the algorithm here? What, what you, what you uh, have to find here is how to, how to handle the constraints, how to handle the, the numerous constraints 
from the collective agreement. It's, it's quite easy to do a schedule for 5, 10, 20 drivers. But here we, we are talking to build schedules for thousands of people. And we do that simultaneously. When you build a schedule manually, you will start by your schedule, and mm -hmm. then you will, you will do my schedule. Our algorithm, they don't work like that. They work globally. They will consider all the drivers, all the buses, all the schedules for all drivers, all buses, at the same time. It's where it's the difference from a human perspective and a computer perspe perspective. So we are using very sophisticated uh, tools, from uh, ma mathematical tools, algorithms, to build these schedules. And when you're doing a mail service, a postal service, there it's, yeah. it's not some, it might be the employees, but it's also the packages and the letters. Yeah. You can untangle traffic. But it's the same, it's the same situation. We don't build one route at the time. As you, as you do it, when you do manual routing, we consider all the parcels to deliver during the day, all the letters to deliver during the day, and we build simultaneously all the routes at the same time. It's a big difference with the, the, between, with the human way of doing schedules. And I know you also work with rail uh, yeah. and rail systems. And there I've heard that uh, while there's a legendary, we've had him on the show, Hunter Harrison, legendary CEO who turned around CN and now turning around CP. And his first uh, instinct is to look at the waste of time in these rail yards yeah, or the, exactly. the rail cars that are sitting that are sitting empty and that shouldn't be and just with that he can sometimes save shave 10 15 percent off the cost you also do that what exactly he's doing. when we build schedules we remove useless time from the buses and we we reduce the bonus paid to the drivers so typically we will be able to save 50 percent of the useless time used by the bus schedules and we can save up to 80 percent of the bonus cost given to the drivers and your um your software is it is it uh, of a kind that if you get a new client let's say somebody in uh, south africa calls you up or whatever and says let's do johannesburg uh, you just punch in the data and this would be a great business if that's the way it is. It and would, then the result comes right out or it, not? It would be too easy. <laughs> of course, it would be too easy. Now, you, you have to understand the way of doing business with this client. You, you have to understand um, uh, what, what is the, um, the operations that they, they are doing. They are doing very different operations, for example, in Johannesburg. Mm -hmm. So you have to adapt the software to do that. You have to, ad you have to adapt our algorithm to produce these results. So you have, you have to work with the people and it's one of the most interesting thing in the work we do. It's to be able to work closely with all these people around the world. It's very interesting. I'm sure it is. Yeah. It's very, very so, but it's not a license deal where you just say, here, here's, the, here's a disc, here's the thing, good luck. It, you are there yeah, also, uh, yeah. creating something and implementing it. Typically, how, how much time would you spend before you're able to... Typically, it's uh, the, same, um, the same money for the services as for the license. For large cities, the license will be millions, a few millions, one, two, three millions. And it will be the same amount of time, one, two million. But how of, long would you be there... A week, a month, six months to study it. A project will will be over uh, one year, for example, and we'll spend probably uh, 100 days on site. That's with incredible. The and how many how many are you? Just, just one, or how many people go? From it depends. It will depend from front. Uh, sometimes we are uh, three, four, five people. Sometimes we are two people. And do you have but to go? We are a few people. Do you have to go out in the field and sort of with a stopwatch and see? No, no. The the our clients do that. Okay. We, we provide software. We are really a software provider. So the, the clients, the transit or the postal company, they do, they do the, all the data entry, they do the data analysis, they, do, they define the constraints and they and define... It's, but it's funny, they define all that, but they can't fix it until you step in. It's, uh, and very often it's a mess, I assume. Then they say, here's a mess and... Less and less, eh? because data is more and more organized these days. It's wh what you say, it was like that 20 years ago. But today, now it's very rare 
that we arrive at a place and data is all messed up all over the world. Like, right now, we, ju we just won a big contract in Hong Kong with mm. a very large bus company. It's more than 4,000 buses. Data is very well organized, very well defined. We are able to go there and to start to produce results very, very quickly. Data may be well organized, but if they're calling you in, there's waste. A waste of time and waste of money. Otherwise, they wouldn't call you. There is, I would say that there is always waste. Uh, because year after year, we are able to continue to improve our algorithms to generate more savings. And it's something else that is amazing. Technology is still pushing so we can achieve larger savings than five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. When you build a schedule, th there is always a little bit of, of time that you lose in the schedule. But also, if, if I take the example here in Montreal for the, for the transit, if you could review the design of your route mm -hmm. on a more frequ frequently, then you could gain a lot. It's an example of what technology will bring. Right now, you don't review the design of route because you have to advise your customers. You mm -hmm. don't want to change route 24 here on Sherbrooke Street every, every month. Mm -hmm. But when you will be able to put this information, to push this information to your customers, maybe you can review route, the schedule of route 24 according to what you need. And then there is still a lot to gain. There is still a, a lot of losses by not reviewing, for example, the route too often. The same for the postal, huh? the same exactly. Really? The, like like, uh, like uh, or, uh, clogged up systems with too much mail and so forth? Yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. And do they pay you, certainly they do this in the energy industry, if you come in and you can uh, maximize the heat and cooling of a building uh, and you can show that to, to your client, yeah. uh, you can say, listen, just pay me a percentage of that and you, obviously you've won if I save you that money. Do they put that kind of test performance test on you? and say, we want to, thanks to you, we want to save this, these many millions, yep. and you can have 20% of it. Does it we work? We offer that to our customers, but we've never, we've never been able to have such a deal with our customers. First, you have to understand, <laughs> on the US market, we, we, we do business with the public sector, with the federal uh, or, or or organization. state governments, yeah. 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 So they, they are reluctant to do that. We, we were able to do that on the, on the Scandinavian market because in Scandinavia, public transit is being operated by private operators. And then they are very interested in savings, of course, when they save 1% of their operations cost is 1% more in their profit. Yeah. And that we were able to share a part of these savings. So it's a sweeter deal for you it's, it's, it's funny because it, it seems to me it's more reassuring. If I was a public transit system, I would want to be able to tell the voters, well, look, we saved this much and they got a percentage of it. No result, they're not paid. Uh, that would be better. But the, the public system doesn't want to do that and the private system does. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's our experience. And yeah. tell me about the bugs because I'm just curious. What happens at the other end when there is a bug? The buses are not there. People are freezing on the street corner. Concretely, what ha or the par parcels are not delivered. What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> it never goes that far as a, the, uh, the bus is not there because of a bug of the software. When, when there is a bug in our software, it means that the planning will be less efficient. Mm. The schedules will be less efficient. Maybe you take one, you need one more bus oh, okay. to operate line 24 here on Sherbrooke Street. Maybe, you, maybe it will, you will need one more driver. You will pay more overtime to your drivers. Okay, okay that's not so when, bad. When, when it's a failure, we knew immediately. People call us and they well, uh, you have to correct your software. Something's wrong. Something wrong. I, I don't have an answer. The worst bugs, it's when it's not a total failure. <laughs> it's when you produce results a little bit under what you can achieve. 
And when I look at postal systems now, um, I would assume they come to you also because of the tremendous competition coming from very efficient yeah. courier services. Yeah. I don't know if courier services call on you. Yes, also. also. Yes, we, do, we do business as well with the private operators as with the, the federal state, state, the state. state governments, yeah. uh, governments and, and postal services. But those postal services, um, they have a bad reputation around the world in practically every country. Um, if, they, if they end up using the same software, though, as the privates, um, in the end, will they be competitive again? Or will they, they have become, in the eyes of many people, sort of the second-rate service? Is that situation going to change thanks to people like you or not? In Europe, you are an organization that really wants to compete with the private sector. If we look at, uh, we, we, have, we do business in Germany, and they are very serious. Eh? Deutsche Post, yeah. the yellow boxes. Yeah, it's, yeah. One, it's one of our customers, and they are very serious. They, 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 they really want to improve their business to compete with the private sector. And I'm sure that people listening would think, wow, I hope these guys start to do airports and airline huh. schedules. <laughs> What's well. very funny, it's, uh, we are a spin-off from Montreal University. There is another spin-off from the same university that does the same as we do, but for airlines. For, for airlines. Well, yeah. uh, yes. I, they have a ways to go because, <laughs> as you know, uh, of course, there's weather there, which is a special yeah. consideration, security, um, but it's a, it's a shambles. It's, it's, it's a, not doing very well. It's a big it? challenge. <laughs> it's a big challenge. I mean, but why aren't you doing it? Why, why two companies? It's the same sort of general area of, of, of software. Uh, it's the same area. It's, it's the same type of software. Uh, we decided that we, we, want, we would focus on public transit. We just decided, and of course, on the postal industry. We and, decided and rail, and rail companies. And rail companies. Rail is closer to public transit. When we say rail, it's rail for public transit. For example, okay, passenger rail. For example, the uh, subway of New York, it's one of our clients. Uh, yeah, passenger. Okay, not, not freight. Not freight. Although not freight, freight benefits also from cost savings from, as I was mentioning with, uh, with Hunter Harrison, that's how he's successfully Yeah, but the around. same, our products could be used also for the freight, but we want to start first with public transit, with passenger. And passenger. are you um, kind of the chainsaw massacre people for, for unions and so on? I, I can imagine they call you in, they say, make it more efficient. You have to respect our union contracts, but make it more efficient. Um, but you must be the bad guys to some of these organizations because you come in and say, well, from now on, this, 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 and that. There's, I mean, there's a, there's a consequence to all this, more discipline, more performance for the people. Do they sort of hate you? Do they push back? It was like that 15, 20 years ago. And now I think that um, union people, they see that we can produce schedules that are more interesting for their people. Better schedules, balanced schedules. And also what we do more and more, we are able to build schedules uh, where we take in consideration the, the wishes from the drivers. Hmm. Okay, so we can build individual schedules that are built in function of what, what you are looking for for your schedules. You want Friday morning off, okay, we can build a schedule that will accommodate your needs. And that drivers in Europe, that uh, it has a lot of success, that approach. In the US, I think that we will get closer and closer to that. And the um, one thing that strikes me, you are such you're so market dominant. You're not a monopoly, but you're market dominant. And you've been market dominant for 30 years, so you probably sort of created the market. But why haven't, why don't you have more competition? How, how can you get so many of these cities? Where is the competition? Why aren't, why aren't you being sort of uh, chased down the street by somebody else doing the same thing? No, we have competition. We have, uh, our, comp our main competitor are based in Toronto, which is funny. Yeah, it's kind of we funny. Are, we yeah, are, they're yeah, both out of Canada. Funny. Yeah. <laughs> it's very funny. Uh, and um, I think that um, the strength of our algorithms, the, the power of our algorithm, it's what differentiates us from the competition. Because our savings, the savings we can show, it means a very good payback, a very good return on investment. When the savings you are doing, you have a payback on three months, four months, five months, 
then it's uh, it's and very now your it's your very brand easy. your brand is established so it's very hard to catch up with you I assume yeah. it's more That's difficult it's more difficult but we are in the technological world and since technology change so quickly you have to be aware you have to adapt you have uh, we we cannot stop we we are in the middle of uh, major modifications to our software mobility customer information live information you must be on the road and when i say the road the road is the whole planet a lot Am yeah right? of course we have we have, since we have customers all over the world but what what's what's it's interesting in our situation we have people uh, young people that uh, i work with they are 26 27 30 they've been all over the world i i, I really like that yeah, I really yeah, like to, to see these young people to be able to have this experience, this knowledge also. And, and I think that software is something very marvelous for me because it can bring knowledge to many people. In, in our case, we are really uh, using these very sophisticated mathematical tools. And in our software, we can give this knowledge to thousands of people using that. That I find that very, very interesting. And there, uh, we'll have to end on this, but there's an irony. As I see these kids you're describing that are all over the world, uh, they must really do a slow burn, as we say, when they're in the airport and the, pl and the plane is late again, yeah. <laughs> and they wish they could fix it. But I'm sure they will one day. So, for a long life to you and to Gyro. Thank you very much. Thank you.